I think humans are very, very emotional people. As much as we like to think that our decisions are rational, they're based on emotions. And attractive <coughs> people evoke certain emotions in mm -hmm. others that are positive, mm -hmm. which is why the response that they get in the workplace mm -hmm. is a more positive one than someone who's less attractive. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, just because of the way the human condition is mm -hmm. and how yeah. emotional we mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to separate and rationalize our decisions so we get biases. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Dreamcatcher podcast, a place where your dreams can find a voice. I'm your host, Celine Chinoy. Thank you to all of you who return every week to tune in to become a better version of yourself. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and rate our show if you enjoy this episode. Life is far from equal and the evidence for that is endless. But one bias many of us struggle to accept, let alone talk about, is pretty privilege. It suggests that conventionally attractive people benefit in many areas of life because of their looks. So in a world that remains highly fixated on outward appearances, how can we nurture our sense of self-worth and play to our strengths despite the unfair advantages better looking people often have? To tackle these issues, I invited fellow podcasters, Sami Dandachi and Tariq Abu Chakra from the Anything and Everything podcast and Marin Munir from Karak with Marin on the show. Join us for this exciting and uplifting discussion. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I am so excited to talk about a topic that is very close to my heart. And um, the whole movement, you know, about women's empowerment has been something that I've done a deep dive into pretty much my whole life because it's very personal to me. I faced a lot of body image issues growing up, and I know what it feels like to you know, go through that pressure and that scrutiny that a lot of women and men go through because of this toxic trend. And um, I actually wrote a book about it called Beauty Redefined. Um, and today I wanted to bring it up again and, you know, do it in this format as a panel discussion because I feel that Unfortunately, things haven't gotten better. They've gotten worse. I feel like we're becoming increasingly more appearance focused as a society. And that's pretty evident in what we see on social media. We see, um, you know, they are visual platforms, but there's just a lot of emphasis on how, how people look, you know, with all the selfies, the Instagram models. And um, there's also been a rise in plastic surgery procedures. And because of that, I feel that it's having an impact on people's self-esteem and their ability to function as a human being. Mm -hmm. So I, and especially for the younger generations. So I really wanted to, you know, uh, bring this to the table and discuss about this and look at it from different angles um, and especially focus on solutions and what we can do because of this. So I want to start our discussion by asking each of you, when you think of the term pretty privilege, what comes to mind? When I think of pretty privilege, what comes to mind is that people who are conventionally attractive generally mm -hmm. have their life easier than people who aren't. So it would be along the lines of if someone is conventionally attractive and they have the same skill set, for example, as someone who isn't, and they're applying for the same job, they're much more likely to be the one who gets the job. Yeah. In the same sense, in social circles, if you're conventionally attractive, especially if you're younger, generally you're going to be the more popular person mm -hmm. among the social circles. So when I think of pretty privilege, I think of the fact that attractive people go through life without experiencing the same hardships as people who aren't as attractive. Yeah, well said. And I just want to say that it's not that this is something new because humans are visual creatures, right? We are wired to um, make a judgment about people based mm. on what we see. Yeah. That's just how we are. It's always been there since the beginning of time. So I, I just think that it, you, we have to find ways, coping mechanisms, 
and ways to check ourselves to make sure that it doesn't get out of hand. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just not, I just want to say that we're not denying that this phenomenon exists because just that's just how we're built, right? But yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think like psychologically, we're just meant to like um, look into certain features of people and judge them based on that. Like that's just how we like those are the biases that are within us. And so when we look at people and we um, believe that they they have a good personality just because of the fact that they have good looks or that they may be a nice person because they look pretty, even though there's so many it can lead to certain toxic behaviors. It can lead to certain toxic phenomenon. Like, but that's how we're wired. So as you said, where do we find the limit where it doesn't go out of hand, where mm -hmm. we acknowledge the fact that it exists and it will continue to exist, but where do we draw the line, you know? So exactly. That's just something to think about. Uh, I, I can see that totally. And I think you're touching on the point that at a, to a certain extent, beauty in, is a bit primal. It's a, it's a, it's quite primal, and perhaps we might get into how we define beauty as well yeah. in this discussion. And on your point, taking it, it's been, it's gone to a certain extent to an extreme. Perhaps with social media, and, and we talk about social media and the impacts on people's, uh, you know, beliefs and and how we judge others. But it's it's created, as you said, we judge based on senses ultimately. Mm -hmm. And with social media, perhaps there's a narrowing of the features that we can, you know, value and, yeah. and critique and, and just, you know, look at. Mm, and therefore, yeah. the extreme is on these small things that they're just they're very confined. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe we'll get into that a bit more. Yeah, I think the whole idea of what's considered beautiful is becoming more um, defined and more narrow because yeah, of globalization. Exactly. Like they call <coughs> this the Kardashian effect. Mm -hmm. So like they yeah. basically set the bar for what's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, if <laughs> Kim is, uh, you know, mm. uh, you lost some weight, then we should all lose some weight. Or if she's contouring <coughs> her cheek in a certain way, we should all be doing that mm -hmm. as well. So um, I, I know culture plays a part also in how we uh, distinguish what's beautiful and what's not. Uh, based on where a person is from. So uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. How do you think culture impacts our perception of beauty? Uh, there's there's a huge impact. Like if you look at the Korean beauty, mm. uh, uh, like what, they, what their standards of beauty are, like the K-pop idols. Mm. And then you compare them with, for example, um, people that are famous in the US or people that are famous in India, you can find very different features that those cultures find attractive. Mm -hmm. Like for example, in Korea, an attractive man would be very feminine, very feminine looking. They also wear makeup, very, very thin, that kind of person. But then in the US, an attractive man would have a very strong jawline. They'd be mm -hmm. pretty muscular, um, very intense features. So you could see that there's a certain standard of mm -hmm. beauty that differs across cultures. And I guess it's the way it, it, it happens to be the way their idols <coughs> are. So the people mm -hmm. who they idolize mm -hmm. are the ones that set the standards yeah. of mm -hmm. beauty. So mm -hmm. it would probably depend on that. So yeah, I, I'm looking across like for the Arab world, for example, what I've seen in, in our circles around what they define beauty as for example, when a man is looking to get married, the question that comes up, I've, I've seen very often now, is would you like or does a man want a girl that's blonde and blue eyes? It's really? Like, really. It's, oh. it's, 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 so you're telling me how it's kind of like a market, actually, earlier. Yeah, it's, it's like a market. describe that? Uh, <laughs> and, and we came up What's with What's the word you use? The Amazonification? <laughs> exactly. I don't want to take too much credit for it. I'm sure it's been doing the rounds before. Uh, with others, but to a certain extent, it's almost like you are like checking out a basket mm. and people are, I've, I've seen this firsthand, they're being sent images mm. of women for potential candidates and it's it's normal. It's completely normal in the Arab world that yeah, people are, are sharing images and, and judging based on pure appearance. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's become, it's even a in business, the Asian it's culture, an actual right? business, like it's the matchmaking business. Yeah, <coughs> it's in Pakistan, India, it's very yeah. common for people to be sharing data, what are they called? Bio data. Bio data. Yeah, of, where of, they talk of about your children. the skin color. Exactly. Mm. You know, um, 
and they like write down so these are the features of my son and these are the requirements we have of the daughter that's so wild which includes being fair skin and so like i think culture definitely plays a role in beauty standards for sure there's no doubt about it but there's lots of things lots of features that are considered beauty across the world like it's kind of been homogenized it's across the world that's true because of globalization because of social media like in in pakistan we know that people love fair skin like that is considered Mm -hmm. beautiful no matter what your features are as long as you're white or you're fair that automatically i think um, that's in a lot of it's exactly it's not just in pakistan and i think in india and china Mm -hmm. southeast um, asia southeast asia yeah that's why people are carrying umbrellas and i've my mom used to tell me don't spend too much time on the sun you're gonna get it too tan yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know i've heard that growing Same. up yeah. so but it's weird because in lebanon it's the opposite like women and men want to get as tanned as possible because that's what's Isn't considered that wild attractive. but yeah. is it because we were talking about this like in lebanon are people generally uh fair a bit more fair yeah, yeah. like uh-huh. even in the west for example they like getting <clears throat> tanned yeah so but even i i consider myself pretty dark i i like getting tanned yeah. and i feel like that's kind of the culture that i grew up in yeah Whereas in, in Southeast Asia, like even moisturizer creams have whitening yeah. so that they lighten mm. the skin. Yeah, the, ty- yeah. the all these surgeries, all these treatments they've done. Like first it was just like those creams and then now fair people are lovely. G- fair and lovely. And yeah. now what are, what Which is now glow and lovely yeah, because, because it just did not sound mm. right to yeah, people. people started yeah, fair, about fair it. Is, is a weird word. Exactly. Mm. So the thing exactly. is my wife, my wife is, is she's, she's white. So she was in Thailand. She lived in Thailand for work a bit. And she was kind of complaining because she does want to get more tanned, but she could not find any creams or lotions that didn't have whitening in them. So she's kind of like, she, she couldn't get like beauty products that didn't have whitening. So she felt like, the, she felt the effect of that first. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. And it's like, it's going to unbelievable proportions because now people are getting treatments done yeah. and we were talking about like injections and all these Whiting weird things injections yeah so- to to be whiter and yeah. initially people thought it's because of colonization like in in pakistan mm-hmm. india that obviously yeah. the uh the, Even the black community col- i yeah. believe they have this uh, thing called colorism so where yeah, lighter skinned people mm-hmm. and darker skinned people like kind of discriminate exactly against each other so yeah. yeah. But to your point, I think there's still also a standard of beauty that's global. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And especially with the advent of social media, things have become a lot more aesthetic because back mm-hmm. in the day, you didn't really have still imagery. Yeah. So when you, you meet a person, stuff. you have to interact with yeah. them and know who they are, which really affects how attractive you see them as well because personality affects your perception. Yeah. However, with the social media, all you see is a picture. Yeah. And it just becomes about the aesthetics. The, the, the thing is, just to add to that, I watched the movie Napoleon yesterday, mm. and this might not be maybe an entirely historical fact, but it might make sense, is that in the movie they showed him meeting a potential wife mm-hmm. who, who's, who's the daughter of, I think, the Austrian king or prince, and they, they said, oh, your portrait looks so good. So perhaps even back then, that's all they had that's all they to look at mean. people when they're miles and thousands of miles apart. So it's not something entirely that's social media driven. It, it might be just based but on... But I think what he's trying to say is it's more in our face now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Like, th- to that point, it's true that uh, people would base beauty also on, like, paintings and art of the, of that yeah. time. Like, I know that in India in the past, they considered women beautiful based on what mm-hmm. the Hindu goddesses would look like, wow. like the pa- arts okay. of the Hindu goddesses. So... I think like thin waist, but big hips. Okay. And uh, so whatever the shape or whatever the art would mm. depict, however the goddess would look like, that's that was considered beautiful. Okay, wow. So it's true that even during that time, yeah. this picture thing existed. Um, but as yeah. you said, yeah. now it's just but, more prevalent. But can you, can you feel for those people that imagine after a portrait, you say, can you do that one again? Because <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like how I look. You can take one. like a thousand selfies now and pick the yeah. best one. Yeah. So, so portrait, you only get one filters shot. and all yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. So, you can so we have to feel for them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is, what was considered beautiful, what is considered beautiful, that has evolved over time. It's not been a static mm-hmm. standard. Exactly. It's been different, even within like, this, the past hundred years, every decade, what's considered beautiful has changed. Right. Yeah. You know, like in the 60s, being a voluptuous woman mm. was considered 
desirable yeah. and then in the yeah. 70s it's like super skinny mm. so how do you keep up you know it's just uh, yeah. it, it's uh, i think it's important for people to keep in mind that uh, it it is not um it's not a static standard it's mm. going to change over time so it's important to create your own standards exactly you know? like why would you kind of put your self worth on something that's temporary exactly. on something that's constantly changing yeah. and I don't blame women for doing that. It's like it's just society. It's mm. it's how it's it's created. But um, this is something that everyone needs to think more about. That you're actually basing your entire self worth mm. on how you look, which is going to change no matter what you do. Like it's mm. out of your control. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm. So, and not just that you are gonna change, but also society's perception of yeah. beauty is gonna constantly change. So it's like these two elements are just always changing. So mm. you, the thing that you can control is like your personality, your knowledge, sure. the way you talk, the way you communicate. Um, and of course, the way you present yourself, you can change mm -hmm. that as well. But there's also bias um, in the workplace. I, you know, I've read a lot of stats and studies that more attractive people get higher salaries or they're more yeah. prone to get raises yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So what do you guys think about that? Like why, like it is happening. Yeah. There are studies that prove it actually. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. for men, the man's height impacts yeah. his income. But level. you can't change that as much. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so their again, earning speaking, capacity yeah. as well. What do you, mm. what do you all think about that when you, I mean, to a certain extent as well, we can only imagine, uh, yeah. as, at, at least for myself as a man, and it's just looking at it from a different viewpoint entirely. Look, seeing a very comparative rat race that, mm. as you were saying, is, is constantly changing, evolving, must be you know quite hectic. And and thinking that, as you were saying, it's not your internal thing; you're you're re relying on external gratification. Exactly. That either I join the game, kind of like you know, don't hate the player, hate the game, but you just have to join the game. Otherwise, you're missing out. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good point. I think humans are very, very emotional people. As much as we like to think that our decisions are rational, they're based on emotions. And attractive <coughs> people evoke certain emotions in mm -hmm. others that are positive, mm -hmm. which is why the response that they get in the workplace mm -hmm. is a more positive one than someone who's less attractive. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, just because of the way the human condition is mm. and how yeah. emotional we mm. are, mm -hmm. it's hard to sometimes it's hard to separate and rationalize our decisions. So we get biases. And the problem is that would overshadow their competence and their skill set. What if there's a candidate who's lesser mm. attractive and has more, yeah. who's more capable, capable of doing the job? Yeah, yeah. There's I something mean, for you know all of you who are in HR or your company owners employing people. It's something to keep in mind to watch out for that bias. For sure, but yeah. if if we want to be realistic, we have to work with the way the world mm -hmm. is. In an ideal world, it wouldn't matter, right? Like mm -hmm. if it shouldn't matter whether or not you're attractive. It depends on how mm -hmm. skilled you are at the job that you're going to get hired to do. But that's just not the way the world works because of how human beings make decisions. That's just the way that I see it. So you have to kind of like what Sammy yeah, said. We have but we to do also have a critical faculty, yeah. which can work very well if we mm. exercise it. You know, we can. I'm not saying we're going to completely override the emotions, but mm. it can keep us in check if we remember yeah. that, hey, I, I can feel this bias. You have to in. keep it top of mind. Keep it on top, yeah. top of yeah. mind yeah. is exactly. what I'm saying. So yeah. that but other, that's very other difficult people to don't do. lose out in the process. It's not their fault that they didn't win the genetic lottery. Yeah. yeah. You know I mean, saying? I don't it's think like, it's that bad to the point where people who are less attractive I've don't find jobs. Mm. I've Is it seen that? It, I have seen mm. it happen in a company I've worked for. It was blatant. Okay. It was because oh. of the color of her skin. Okay. And, and the industry okay. does differ, right? It depends on the industry heavily, right? Um, it's, it might be in some industries not so apparent, but in others, the small margin mm. changes your entire you know, course. Yeah. Um, and your career. So, and, and your point is more like labeling that bias, like the halo. Ultimately, we know we're the aware of that. Th there's, a, there's a nice heuristic by a writer that he says, well, when you're trying to judge two people of relatively equal, you know, capabilities, pick the person that doesn't, is not that much as attractive because they had to work harder yeah. to reach that exactly. point, to be at the, you know, stage of being assessed. Uh, so that's yeah, kind of how we need to think about it a little bit. But so do context. the opposite of what what your what your inversion. What yeah. you would yeah. want to do in a way, because we know we have the halo, right? We, among other biases. Yeah. Yeah. 
of course. We're full of biases, whether we like it or not. That's <laughs> yeah. just the way we are. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It's just how you manage them. I think like th the thing about you can either have a victim mentality where you're like, oh, I'm not as beautiful. So mm. I'm never going to, you know, be in that position. Y you can either have that or you could try to present yourself, uh, try to mm. work with what you can work with. Yeah. Like, yeah. of course, exactly. there are some things you cannot control. But instead of focusing so much on that, you mm. focus on the rest. And yeah. like society is the way it is like there are certain things that you just cannot change right so that as you were saying like humans are just conditioned to be that way so yeah and you coco chanel mm -hmm. once said there's no such thing as an ugly woman just mm -hmm. a lazy woman so <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> yeah so if you put in a little effort and make the best of what you have I, I, I think, think i agree that's with that what you should yeah do. that makes sense that's yeah, what you should do yeah. don't just sit on your couch eat ice cream a tub of ice cream and say oh woe is me a victim yeah. mentality do yeah. something yeah. about it yeah. go work out eat healthy you know mm. there's so many resources out 100 percent. i'm not all for those i i personally don't support like i know i might get into trouble for this but you know like plus size models and like women who are a bit obese i know that's a trend now like kind of mm. putting them on a pedestal and saying hey their fat is beautiful but i'm like no it's not i i don't think so because it's unhealthy you know, you're yeah. you're gonna get some sort of health complications uh, later down the line. Now you're young, but later on it's gonna be a problem. I think uh, Victorian era England would disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm coming they, purely they from, love their I'm plus coming from a woman. health standpoint <laughs> yeah. here, and I'm just. I'm just not for that trend. No, I, I agree. It's unhealthy it's anyway. Like, it's unhealthy. Yeah, I'm not obese. saying be skinny size zero. No, I'm not. Just don't be unhealthy fat. I agree. I, you I know? can't, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. disagree with. Yeah, because yeah. that's also unhealthy, like being too skinny. Definitely. Oh, yeah, for that's sure. not what we're going for. for sure. Unless you are naturally a slim person. And, and so. it's putting the beauty slightly suspended on the side, more objective, right? In yes. terms of yeah, your overall health. Yeah. Yeah. So. What, what I'm curious about is if, if someone grows up in a vacuum where they don't see any other human beings and not even themselves in a mirror. So you're in a room and you grow up and then you're like 19 or 20 years old and then you're given images of humans and told to rate their attractiveness. Mm -hmm. How would you do it? Like I'm trying to think if you don't have the environment affecting your view of conventional attractiveness. That's very interesting. What does a human really find Sounds attractive? Sounds like an unethical experiment, but very, very unethical. <laughs> that, very unethical. And, and I think it, it may rely on two or if maybe three things. And the, the two I can think about are either genetics, that you have a genetic, like if somebody's Asian versus Arab versus white, they might think that someone that like their parent, if you're going Freudian, mm -hmm. you might say that, oh, well, that woman looks like my mom, even though I've never seen my mom. But, you know, I have that genetic predisposition. That's true. It could there be. are studies so that show that. we tend to go for partners who look we'll a little look bit like, like yeah. our parents. Is yeah. it the, 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 the daughter, the father, the, the son, the mother? Yeah. So that's, the there's genetics and there's the primal sense of beauty definition that we can't really define. Yeah. That you, you just know beauty without even saying what it is about them that's beautiful. Yeah. It's kind of like animals. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> like in, in the animal kingdom, <laughs> there are, uh, for example, in elephants that have the bigger tusks, they're the ones that are deemed more beautiful. Mm. And it's just an instinctual thing. I think with for all them. animals, they have, they have, they have all the best, uh, this feature yeah. that, there's yeah. 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 There's an instinct. Yeah. So I wonder what the human one is and if we're actually like the, because in the evolution of beauty mm -hmm. and you see how, different people find different mm. people attractive. Is there actually an objective beauty yeah, yeah, yeah. that well, isn't defined by what we're fed the whole time? Yeah. I mean, there's this instinctual part and then there's a social part where we've, what we're fed by society mm. and media. Mm -hmm. so Are they the same thing? I don't I think, think they're, they're the same thing. They're definitely not the same they're thing. Not I the think same. They're, they're, they're not the same. I think there can be certain things that, of course, they, they're, there's a blend. But then yes. you, I think a lot of our perception so far has been influenced by what we see, by society, mm. by social media. So we're, us ourselves are not even able to identify what I we know. would consider beautiful. Okay. One feature though that people talk a lot about is symmetry. Right. Like having yeah. a symmetrical face is generally considered beautiful regardless of mm. culture, country. Yeah, that's why there's a rise in uh, cosmetic surgery for the face. For people the face. do all kinds of things. I mean, of course, nose jobs is the most Correct. popular one, but they chisel their jaw. Their jaw, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I forget what it's called, but they do something here with their cheeks to make mm. it more prominent. Mm. 
um, a lot of celebrities are doing it. And I think that's why mm. they've removed the stigma from mm. doing such procedures True. and people can do mm. it now. They feel comfortable doing it and even admitting that they, they had it mm. done. And a lot, of, like, especially in the Middle East, I see a lot of women getting Botox, mm. like <laughs> you see it Botox a lot. and lip their fillers, lips, fillers, lip yeah. fillers. It's very common now. It's not, they're not ashamed, even if it's mm. really strikingly obvious. Yeah. yeah. So... Okay, here's a question. So we're saying that it might be a mix of primal and, you know, social media, societal driven. Where do we think the the standard from s- the social media or society, where does it come from? How do they come up with, we're That's thinking this is the standard that we think you should be, you should find attractive. So do they, on the one hand, is it completely kind of fresh, new, or they actually understand to a certain extent our primal view mm-hmm. and they're building on it. Because they know this is your layer, so that's how, that's how I'm gonna exploit it, perhaps. That's a very interesting question. I think like for the longest time, beauty was like, for example, when we talk about India, Pakistan, uh, when after mm-hmm. they were colonized, the beauty became what the colonizers looked like, because uh, you know okay. they were they were the powerful ones, they were the elite ones, so obviously they're beautiful as well. So I that played a role in that sense. I think the Western side of the mm-hmm. world plays a huge role in determining that as well. One also because of Hollywood, like movies in general, like Bollywood oh. was created as a copy of Hollywood. It's Bombay and Hollywood. Yeah, literally. So um, I think the West plays a huge role in this um, for lots of reasons. One was when we talk about colonizers and then Hollywood movies, media. But where does it... That's changing now. With increase, but the focus on diversity. I think it's... good. We're mm -hmm. heading in the right direction in that front. (laughs) But uh, on on your point, so I've I've done a bit of research about sort of standards and and how they've set standards for something like uh, women empowerment. The first time women started smoking cigarettes was done by a marketing genius who had lessons from Freud. And he designed the whole, you know, sort of process with, with Freud's elements in mind because they, the tobacco industry wanted to tap into mm. women's, you know, women smokers. Uh-huh. Women weren't smokers. It was, yeah. I think the 50s or 60s, if I'm getting correctly, it was the Marlboro Man kind of, you know, you give your husband a cigarette and so on. Yeah. And, and using the, the knowledge of Freud to tap into and design a propaganda or a media agenda pushed women to smoke. So that's how they wow. tapped into the psychology at the time. Mm. This, I think it comes down to the same thing. Whoever the elite or the influencers that the people look up to yeah. are what define conventional attractiveness. And media is basically, they feed us who we need to look up to. Yeah. And then those images are what we consume mm. and find attractive, yeah. which Very is true. probably why, like you said, um, people who are colonized by the British want to become fairer. Yeah. And it's because they viewed them as the elite back then. So they yeah. felt like having dark skin was keeping them behind in society. Yeah. So from an evolutionary evolutionary perspective, you want to be lighter so that you look more like them so that you have more chance yeah. of being like I them. I know in colonial, uh, in, in America, you know, if there were like fairer workers, like among the black community who used to work in the field, they were allowed to enter the their master's house. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So they had, they were favored in other words, mm. or they were spared from like a really mm. bad punishment uh, or they yeah. were given better food, yeah. better housing. Mm. So I think that also, it, I mean, it, it, it does matter. Mm. It does matter in those situations. Yeah. So a lot of it is social, like our perception yeah. Yeah. Of, of beauty, but how, like you mentioned the point early on about how you kind of have to overcome that, especially I think as a woman more than, I can't relate, but I feel like as a woman, you'd have to in some ways not tie yourself to how beautiful you are and try to, how do you overcome that? Because you mentioned how important it is for people to kind of overcome that so that they don't let it consume them and make make it their entire personality. I think that's the biggest challenge. I think that we, like as women, you place your worth on how you look, on how beautiful you are. And then men, they place their worth on how much they earn, their job, their occupation. That's how it's always been. Like, Because women didn't work earlier on, so it was more, more so how they look, their appearance and things like that. So, and I think eliminating that mindset is is very hard to do. 
and instead what i think is that you don't need to eliminate that what you can do is kind of use it for to your advantage like what some people say is that you know if if you think you are beautiful or even like the, the value of a woman the the power that a woman has is is their beauty it's true it's one mm-hmm. of their assets it's not just their asset it's one of their assets it's their beauty so what you can do is use that in your favor in in certain ways so make yourself look presentable make yourself look good make yourself um don't go crazy but just make yourself look presentable yeah. but just ensure that that's not the only asset you're working exactly. on exactly like your that's, career work on your skill set your creativity your personality become a good person yeah. i think that you doesn't know? exactly I answer think, his question yeah. like i don't know how you can shift the mindset where you're not just focusing on one asset uh, on your beauty the issue is if you are you're totally your identity is tied to your looks mm. your looks your ap- physical appearance is a depreciating asset you're going to mm-hmm. get old i'm sorry to say yeah. so i've seen interviews with uh, i i saw this interview that oprah did with like some actresses mm. who were really beautiful in their youth and now they're older you know they're in their 60s 70s and mm. they talked about how they wish they did things differently that they actually developed yeah. other um aspects of themselves and not make it all about their appearance because they were feeling yeah. really down after they you know they, they're like we'd walk in a room and people no longer looked at us yeah. well you know and that felt horrible so i think it's important to um kind of develop other areas of your life your career your interests mm-hmm. your passions and make that um an integral part of your identity as well because that is a good investment of your time your energy because that can only grow so someone like someone who's addicted to social media and who wants to take the best picture of themselves to post it on Instagram and wait for the likes and wait for yes. someone to give them compliments. Yes. How could they how could they get past that and do what yeah. you're saying and try to focus on themselves and growing other aspects or areas? Well, don't like, first of all, don't spend so much time on social media. Get out there, do something, help other people, like make use of your life. There are so many people who could use help and look at your skill set. How can I make a difference in people's lives? And you maybe could be even your sibling you don't have to like go all mother teresa just yeah. help your sibling with their homework like just do something like stop being so self focused self centered it's also your friendships right your your friendships yeah, sure have a good support of yeah. su- uh, support uh, yeah. community like have mm. so but, but it's not a case of obviously just the you know the women needing you know control or you know acting differently on on our side as men we need to also change the perception that you just want or want friends that are pretty as well right because we're we're living in harmony mm. every everything that a man does affects a woman and vice versa mm-hmm. so it's, it's it's tough to be and it's very hard to understand the formula right but all our actions affect each other mm-hmm. and and we're together so the, the the vicious cycle is built together and it it's removed together or altered together um, so we have a responsibility as well right you know, i also want to talk about dating because like i want to understand I know men like pretty girls. But you do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> so, um how does that play a role in your assessment of a woman's potential as a partner? I know you're married to Arik, but like just let's imagine that you're not. For a yeah, moment. Yeah, I mean, I still find women attractive <laughs> even though I'm married. You do. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't stop. So, um I know you can speak for yourself, but if you could talk about like your experience and mm-hmm. perhaps your friends, like how like how do how does beauty play a role in your judgment of their it's definitely there yeah. honestly and it's with time and with maturity hopefully is that i'm more judging of a person's character because it's about your values i think it should be at least my opinion it should be about your values and as you were saying you, you want to work on your personality you want to work on like can you have a conversation with someone yes if if you if i'm dating a girl or i marry a girl that's very beautiful it's it's good in the moment short term but long term can i carry a conversation there's a scene in pulp fiction which i really like is between oma Thur- oma thurman and john travolta they're like you really know a person when you can like kind of shut the fuck up around them and you it's not awkward it's not awkward. so once you reach that i think you kind of you realize that regardless yeah. of how they look mm. i know this is a bit woo woo but <laughs> the beauty is beyond the visual 
because yeah. there's energy to people together, right? Yeah. So when it, yeah, I I definitely agree. When it comes to dating, I think the the initial thing always that's gonna that you're gonna see is how they look, but. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah that, I that's do the normal. same when I'm looking at men. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, we all do it. It's exactly. completely, it's well, completely normal. normal. Between men and women. So but we're both visual, but who has an edge or who focuses on the visual more? I think men, men do because men do. Do. women, yeah. they're yeah. more concerned about his financial stability. Occupation. His, yeah. Yeah. his character. Will he be a good father? Yeah. 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 They're, less, but they're, they're still visual, yeah. but probably less. They're visual. I think they're more visual than they used to be because now we're educated. Most of us are working, so we can be a little bit more picky yeah. <laughs> in that department mm. so. but the thing is what i find the most attractive is someone's personality wit humor yeah uh ability to carry a good conversation that makes someone way more attractive or someone way less attractive than yes. what i initially perceived them as but that's not what i see in yeah I, I, I know i know hollywood is not a good place but you know for instance jeff bezos the he left his wife and he went for this really extremely attractive woman who's a journalist also and she i i, I can't help but thinking but his judgment his the reason why he went for her is completely because of her superficial superficial and her sexual attractiveness as well yeah. you know she's got that you know those big lips mm. and so and in fact there are studies that show that a man's income there's a high correlation between the man man's income and the attractiveness of his oh, wife his or partner. his girlfriend yeah. right. we see it all the time so, uh, and I, I just wonder about that. I think it depends on the man. I think yeah. someone who is not as confident or secure about themselves wants to convey outwardly that they can find or, or secure the most attractive mate. Yeah. And ultimately, one of our main instincts is the sexual instinct, right? Like we want to reproduce. So someone who's perceived as very sexually attractive makes their mate just by transition also be very attractive because they were able to secure them. So I think someone like Jeff Bezos can, so he does, just because of how selfish he is and how he's not as concerned about having to sit down and have a conversation with his wife, but instead wants a trophy wife that he can... It's kind of what Leonardo DiCaprio does as well. So he, he has a certain age cutoff yeah. where women but over 25... Is it, I mean, men like that, I mean... Is it a certain type? Is, does it say something about the man? Yeah. About his depth, about what's important mm. to him? To a certain extent. I think it's also a bit primal, is that there is a sort of correlation in our mind that young is more beautiful. Yes. You know, right? Because it's just, a bit, again, visual. Mm. It's purely visual. And, and there's a sense about, you know, uh, a bit crude, but, you know, ripeness of, you know, being able to bear children. The younger you are, if you marry younger, you'll have more children. So maybe that's where the, the pure primal side is. I can have a bigger family if I marry a girl. If I'm 40 and she's 20, oh, I can have 10 kids. What about ego? I also think ego is involved. I, th I know you were alluding to that. About yeah, definitely. Getting arm candy and having... Oh, I, yeah. you know, I think, yeah, I think sure. a big part of... For, for, some, for some men, it's just an ego driven, thing. I think, right? it's, it's yeah. more showing off. Rather than she's like an accessory. See what I got. Like, yeah. 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 It stops becoming about having a genuine connection with a person. And I feel like people like Jeff Bezos lose a lot of what makes a human human because of how they live their life. Jeff Bezos is like unfathomably rich and has yeah. anything he's the third he wants. wealthiest man, I believe. Third yeah, or fourth. He, I yeah. don't know if he still is. Yeah. Somewhere, either him or Elon Musk, or yes. I don't know who else is a contender. I, Elon, Elon yeah. is first, but anyway, yeah. So They all have a B, so. A B? <laughs> the billion. I mean, once Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it I'm like, what, what, a B? It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. So 100 I, I billion, don't, 100 it, billion. It's, <laughs> what's it up? <laughs> too much money. It's too much money. It's a lot of money. But yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know, like, in terms of, deep down whether or not they're a happy person or does it even make a difference in terms of their happiness like is jeff bezos really missing something to really want to go after women like the one he's currently yeah. with or is it just the way he is i i really don't know if it's yeah see what bothers but, me about that is that people like him who are front and center and doing this how are people like regular people going to perceive, perceive that. Yeah. yeah. So there's a reaction. You're telling me looks don't matter, but see, like, look, yeah. look, 
look at the kind of woman he's going for. I think like Jeff Bezos is not the only example because like there's lots. You see this a I, yeah. lot. This is commonplace yeah. now for rich guys to be going after like these trophy mm-hmm. um, correct girls and. And I think this is also what's perpetuating the beauty standard because then women are like, oh, I don't need to work on anything else because I'm beautiful. I can get this guy. So that makes it even harder for women to realize that yeah. they should be working on their other yeah. assets, like their other competencies. Only fans. You, you know about OnlyFans, Yeah, exactly. Right? I was, I was going to mention that. Like, It's just one thing is using your beauty to, you know, to get it... Mm-hmm you know to get ahead in life yeah. but then monetizing it but then cool. monetizing it yeah. to they're making that good extreme. money a lot of these only yeah. Fans, yeah again there are so many consumers who consume that type of content yeah. which again makes it harder for the women to eventually realize that what they're doing is perpetuating the beauty standard is um adding uh, is making beauty the only asset of a woman and things along those lines i think all of these like societal factors have just perpetuated it even further, including the fact that uh, men, rich men want these type of women. So as you were saying, like we live in a society that's harmonious. If you know what you, what men do affects women, what women do affects men. And so like men playing a role in this plays a huge factor as well. And do men also face a similar situation with women? I mean, uh, I think it's different. But I just wanted to touch on your point a little bit ahead. just by saying that because, the number one, because of Hollywood again and globalization and the age of information and, and we, we're learning from them in a sense. Mm-hmm. They, talk, they call it television programming for a reason, in, in a way. And maybe that's just, it's just setting poor standards and benchmarks for men to look up to. You know, they're not the best role models. That's what we we to, I think, just accept. The other thing is that when we look at someone like you know, Leonardo DiCaprio or whoever, the way they date, when we consider that, okay, if every man did that, what are the implications on the world? That's how we kind of realize that, is this a good outcome when it's scaled? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. maybe it's not. And I don't think we need to really do any studies to... And that's kind of what you were saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. just that exactly. if everyone... Think about if I do something, and it's a bit philosophical, Kantian, is that if everyone did it, what are the outcomes? You know, if you think, oh, I can get away with it, and it's fine, one, two, three, but a million... Then it gets that's what's problematic about these influential people. Yeah. They're kind of influencing other people to want to be like them, yeah. which causes this problem. Uh, as for your question about the risk, I think there is a reciprocation as well among like some. It's not as prominent because as a man gets older, <clears throat> their status really becomes something of an attractor rather than whether or not they're conventionally physically aesthetic or attractive. Mm. But for younger men that don't have that for them, I think it does really, really affect a man's Mm. confidence growing up if uh, they're not able to, you know, they're not attractive, so they're not finding people to bond with. Especially on on dating apps. I mean, you got one Mm. shot. You know, people are going to look at your photos and if they don't like what they see, that's it. Yeah. You know, you're... No, no, 100%. And, and, And it differs, right, between if... If I was when I was 20 years old, who am I competing with? If the girls look up to someone who's 40 and has his life set for him, so he's competing with the man that you know. The older he gets, his value increases. Hopefully, financially, he's a better man. He can be a better provider. So that's how we're sort of affected. The young man is non-existent in a way to to women of his age because they look up to another man. That's all. And you don't. You can't blame them in a sense. They have an easy ticket to life. I can marry this guy. And if, if I have certain values, he meets them, why not? I don't necessarily agree with that. Some women are maybe like that, but a lot of them aren't. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. In yeah. a sense, if you've met, but if you, depending on how you, what's your moral structure and framework, if you meet a, a person in the right way, and okay, 10 years, maybe 15 years, sure, but it's in, a bit weird, but you, you can do it. In our early 20s they, they in it. university, women were dating men from university. They weren't dating men in their 40s. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying it's a, it's a, the majority, but it, it, it happens. It does happen, yeah. yeah. More than what the opposite. Generally, women do find older men more attractive. I think that they usually women think that older men are more mature than younger men yes. their yeah. age. So um, they just naturally go for that. I don't know if it's necessarily about... I think one of the main reasons is maturity. I don't know if it's necessarily about, oh, younger men are not 
as handsome as the older mm-hmm. men. I'm not sure if, if it's about the attractiveness and mm-hmm. like the physical attractiveness, but more so about the wisdom, the maturity. I think it depends on the woman too. Yeah. What, what she likes, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 There's some women going for the younger chocolate boys and then you have ones who are going for the mm-hmm. silver foxes. So it, I think that depends on the There's woman. a lot of older women that go for younger guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And again, true. I think that's an ego thing. Look, that is ego. Know, I still yeah. have young men it's the same for men older men going for younger younger women it's also ego but there's definitely an asymmetry right because i think it's fair to say that there's more older men for younger women than the reverse oh you mean there's more older men going for younger women than older women going for younger but that's 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 changing too okay but i think not as much like i think that like older men going for younger women that's much more common i think that's more acceptable in society yeah because it's more acceptable that's true there's less shame about a man dating uh, older man Mm -hmm. dating a younger woman whatever you older woman dates a younger man it's like what is she doing (laughs) so would you would you would you date a man in their early 20s sorry would you date a man in their early 20s probably not but my reason would be that it, we he wouldn't be mature enough and right. we're from yeah. a different generation so we'll have different music tastes we'll have mm. different i don't know sensibilities i don't know i i i'm generally looking for someone who's more mature and knows what they're doing and someone i can have a deep conversation with okay so and would you date the, someone in their early 40s no <laughs> 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 that's way too much for me yeah. okay i think like yeah of course like dating a, f- You're a saying few that years now <laughs> <laughs> like dating a guy a few years older like that's that's like chill you know like five years or so but like 10 20 years i think for me personally it's like then you a get into generational much. differences that's exactly. what i've seen that's, that's what i've seen like yeah. I, I don't know i just personally feel like i, I can't bond with that person yeah. as can much. you find them can you find them attractive though Men in their late 30s, early 40s. I mean, yeah, men in their late 30s. Of course, I can find like men, older men attractive, like in terms of physically how they look. Yeah, for sure. I think that you you can, regardless of age, you can see, you know, a handsome man and, and no, not so handsome man. Like you can tell. Right. Um, I think age doesn't matter anymore also because it, it depends. Like there's the biological age and there's a the chronological age. You have some 40-year-olds who look like 20-year-olds and you have some 20-year-olds who look like 40-year-olds. So it mm. really depends on how, much, how whether you take care of yourself. And, yeah, 100%. You know, it's really difficult to say these days because people age differently now mm. than right. they did in the past because there's so many things you can do. So what I was trying to say is like someone that you find very, very attractive in their late 30s or early 40s, you wouldn't date them because of their age. No. What about you? If you find someone who's in their early 20s, very, very attractive Mm -hmm. and you get a chance to date them, you also wouldn't because of their age? I would not. (laughs) Okay. That's too young for me. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's too old for me. Like, I can't. I I think that's... And it's not because I'm worried about what people would say. I just... Would not be compatible with someone yeah, that young exactly yeah. so it's not just about aesthetics then there's definitely other factors absolutely you want to have a conversation be... with them yes but okay. i think this is this has a lot to do with culture so for example in our culture like at least for me growing up like dating is not like very commonplace in pakistani culture of course uh you know you like a person when you get older you date and so on but like going from one boyfriend to the other boyfriend like this is not a thing at all so for me when i would want to date someone i would want to date them with like the rightest of intentions because i want to eventually get married to that person got it so but then in the in other cultures it's like you can date date for fun since yeah you can date for fun exactly so i think since if you can date for fun then you would even go for like the eye candies you would go for people with you know not not the best of personalities because you're like oh this is just for a period of time and then you move on to the next steve harvey calls it sports fishing versus uh fishing for keeps i don't know if you've (laughs) heard that no so when you're sports fishing you're just you're going to take out the fish and you're going to throw it back right mm. you, and then you just show your friends and just to show your friends yeah. and then and that's how, yeah that's how he describes men's approach to dating where they did they, he looks at a woman and he decides okay am i is it is she sports fishing material or is she fishing <sighs> for keeps so <laughs> and i think uh i think looks become less important when you're fishing for keeps i mean you want someone mm. you're attracted to but right. she doesn't have to be a 10 if she's like an eight or a seven but she has this fabulous personality yeah I want to marry that girl. I want to take her home to meet my mom. So I, I think at the end of the day, it's the whole package, right? 
maybe that's a heuristic that you know you should tell men that okay date women that you'd like to introduce to your mom yeah. or, or your family or your grandmother yeah you know that that's how you kind of maybe you know sift away the the noise of you know like the attraction and exactly you know, all that stuff. yeah so okay so pretty privilege exists <laughs> <laughs> we're not denying that it doesn't mm. what are we going to do about it as a s- collectively mm. individually I want to reframe this a little bit, just, just to ask. <laughs> Please do. How do we define beautiful? Because I've been looking into this. How do pretty or beautiful? How do we define it? And how does science define it? Did you say like facial symmetry? Facial mm-hmm. symmetry, but okay. Yeah. Do, do you but we're for the sake of simplicity, we're going for like conventionally yeah. what's considered beautiful, and the yeah. favoritism that results because of that standard. It exists, okay. right? So 100%. what can we do? What can we do? How can people feel go- good about themselves? How can mm. they maintain their sense of self-worth? Mm. And what makes them unique people? And really bring that to the front in their career, in their personal life. How can they shine, even if they are not conventionally attractive? I think this also has a lot to do with your upbringing, like with how your parents raise you yes. and your environment. So um, if your parents raise you, by constantly talking about your skin color, constantly talking about how, you know, apply this cream so you get whiter. Like Mm -hmm. that really plays a role in how you perceive yourself growing up. I know we're talking about what we can do now, but I'm just generally saying like your upbringing. Yeah. So how you can raise your kids. How you can, yeah, if you're a parent, make sure you feed them those more empowering messages. And that's a, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that plays a huge role like even if you look at these girls who you know are doing only fans and all these things a lot of like when you look into their stories you know their parents are divorced or you know they 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 moved out of their house early on so they don't have like a family culture like it has a lot to do with the family environment that perpetuates this so your upbringing is one of the but that's out of control though yes yes that's true i think i think well to her point i don't think we can control the immediate around us but what we can control is the next generation so if we raise our kids to kind of not idolize beauty as much as Mm. we do in today's society in a lot of ways like i'm i don't know i don't want to speak for everyone but i feel like society does idolize beauty a lot now so i think raising our kids to not put as much importance on that is probably one way to combat it. And I don't think today, if you're asking me what I can do today uh, to, to change things, I don't think I can do much, honestly, uh, except try to you know perpetuate mm. my own skill set and mm. uh, feed the world what I feel like is the right thing. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm thinking about someone listening to this and they really don't feel good about how they look. Mm. So know. what would you so, tell them? How would you how would you change them? Well, I, as I said before, I said uh, create your own standards. Compete with yourself. Don't compare yourself with other other people. And focus on your own strengths. Focus on becoming a better human being. Uh, ha- set some goals. Have a vision. Have something that you aspire mm-hmm. to. Have a purpose in life. Like let it go beyond yourself, and think about others. I think. I think that's important and limit your time the amount of time you spend on social media yeah. did and you have watching tv or magazines and being kind of uh, caught by the wave of admiration for a lot of these celebrity idol that we idolize simply have, because of the way they look i if the celebrity is doing some good work if they're supporting charities or if, like mm. for instance i love angelina jolie she's beautiful but i love the work that she's doing with refugees and all that mm. for me she's like one of the most like like an ideal woman that's what you you know and she's a good mother so i think picking good role models is Mm -hmm. going to be key yeah Yeah. and they don't have to be celebrities they could be someone within your own family but have you you ever been caught in the trap of needing to look beautiful all the time oh yeah absolutely you have yeah it happens all the time yeah Yeah. happens all the time and i think it'll continue to happen i don't think you can fully eliminate it's like accepting yes this is this is a phenomenon. It's going to continue and I can't change it, but I can change what's within me and my self-talk, what I say to myself, how I interpret how the world looks at me. So, Yeah, just to add to that, in a sense, at times, some issues are a matter of ignorance. 
-hmm. And when we improve education and conversations, people hopefully will deviate from certain superficial attributes towards more constructive conversations, better engagement. Folk, when, you, when you can think about millions and millions of families, what are they talking about? You know, a, a lot of stuff, but if they're, if they're focused on just the talk of the day is, well, look what you wore and look at all that stuff, that's all they're gonna, they're gonna keep feeding that cycle. Yeah. And they're gonna feed that to their daughters and, and so on. So by changing a bit the narrative and what, what we're consuming, what we pay attention to, maybe with time we can, you know, we focus on other stuff and you don't tell your daughter as she's growing up, well, you could have been beautiful, more beautiful and things like that. So it's a sense, you know, ignorance and education that yeah. needs to happen for men and women. Uh, like yeah. this is a long rooted issue that's been going yeah. on for it's generations. Fun. You cannot. Yeah. And you it's cannot fun. just change it by like it's one little action. Reprogramming, it's about <laughs> reprogramming yeah, the mind. It's, it's and that is that has to come from different directions. Exactly. The media, our it's loved long ones. Term. But you don't think plus size models is the way to do it. Just I'm not. Because you <laughs> I mean, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> the thing is that I, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to fat shame them at all. That's not what I'm going for. No, no. But I know, I'm saying I know. that that not, that should not be glorified. But don't you feel like that's a way to combat? Yeah, exactly. Challenge yeah. today's. As, yeah. If as long as it's not, they're not unhealthily fat. They're not Lizzo fat. <clears throat> okay. I think that one thing that uh, fat size, plus size models that they've been really good at promoting is self love, like love for your body. Uh, it, it, I get they're that, promoting but confidence, yes. and I think that is definitely important. For Even sure, for you to lose weight, for you to sustainably, yeah. healthily lose weight, you need self love. You need like yeah. confidence Absolutely. within yourself. Absolutely, but you could that could come from a woman who's an athlete, who's healthy, who's probably mm. more masculine looking, has more muscles, and who's toned. You know. Why, I, I feel, because a girl, a young girl sees that and she'll be like, oh, so it'll be okay for me to look for like that. Look. I guess I can eat, go out and eat as many burgers and pizzas as I want. So That's I'm saying that someone who does be. not have the faculty or the mindset to be able to really kind of filter the messages, someone like mm -hmm. you would be like, yeah, I get it. It's all about self-love and it's not literally about looking a certain way, but for a young girl who can't do that, she might literally be like, okay, looking fat and obese is, is fine. It's acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I, I like when what they did was they started this conversation on challenging the For idea sure. of beauty, the challenging standards of beauty, which was great, which is definitely what we want. But I think it just, it can become extreme where then people start idolizing. And that's what's happening. Plus, yeah. And if that you go is on what's Instagram, happening. There that's is a unhealthy. Huge I agree with that. That's women. unhealthy. Huge community. Yeah, that's for sure. And unhealthy. it's just escalated to a point where it's just, I, I don't support that, but I, can, I do appreciate the fact that they made us feel more comfortable about our bodies and they're promoting this message of self love. That I, I think that is their intention, though. I think that was their intention, and then eventually it just started becoming a little too extreme. Where yes. then, you know, everything <clears throat> blows out of proportion. Right. Every movement that's come in society, yeah. like in the beginning, it makes sense; it's for the right reason, and then it just goes yeah. for nonsense. Well, I guess okay. So we're gonna conclude this. No matter what your body type, your body size, your body shape, you can find beauty within yourself, right? And I think we should all aim for being healthy, being healthy, being yes. vibrant, having that vitality, having that energy to really enjoy your life and really be able to accomplish your goals. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, you know, but being able to, you know, accomplish what you want and actually make a difference in people's lives. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think in terms of maybe the, the self-love is that maybe they realize that let's start with the mental sort of side mm -hmm. so that you're in the right frame and then you can hopefully lead to other more impactful actions and, and habits in your life. And that's where you said that it might have gone to an extreme where I'm just focused on my you know, self-love without tying it to actions that are healthy. Absolutely. So maybe that's where they started with that direction, but it didn't you know, lead on. Yes. Perhaps. Uh, yeah, uh, for sure. And beauty is skin deep. It's not going to make you happy. You need to work on yourself and how you view the world and how you view yourself. I'm it saying, because that's what's going to make you at the, happy yeah. at the end of the day. Because how many good looking people do we know who are just miserable? Yeah. Right. And, and, and it's, it's a, you, like you said, it's a ticking time bomb. Like you're going to be beautiful for a bit and yeah. then you're not. Yeah. And then yeah. what? It's and then what? Yeah. So yeah. think about that when you are evaluating yourself yeah. and what, where you want to spend your time, energy, 
and focus on. So, yeah. And you mentioned these, you know, certain um, individuals or celebrities that late in their lives, they regret it. So maybe the message is to people, look to those and learn from their mistakes because yeah. they've walked in those shoes. Yeah. And uh, as a man, we can't really empathize. We, we try to, obviously. But the women that are speaking about this, yeah. you know, bring that to the to the f- forefront more. Absolutely. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with look, making yourself look pretty, you know, going out to get a pedicure, do it, do it. But make sure it's coming from the right place, the right intention. Yeah. It's coming out of self-love where it says, I have to do this so those yeah. people are not going to look at me or I'm going to look mm. unattractive. So, yeah. So yeah. Intention, intention is counts. important. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much for being here with me today, Marine, Tarek, and Sami. So if you want to connect with them or listen to their podcast, you can uh, do so by clicking on the links that I will be placing in the description. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much.